Hello, welcome to another video in this series on quantum computation. This one is going to be a short video and it will be purely theoretical. And um, I would get a bit into the math of things. So uh, this is not really required, like you can totally skip this video, but then this video will give you a physical or sort of physical understanding of what the gate actions are and how should you think of qubits. So a good way to think about qubits is this block sphere representation. And the idea behind that is consider a sphere. So a sphere is like a ball and um, each qubit is basically um, the state of a qubit is represented by a point on the surface of the ball. So basically, um, yeah, so for example, this is the sphere. It's a three-dimensional sphere. Um, zero is, the state zero is the north pole and the state one is the south pole. So technically the state is represented by a vector from the origin to the point on the surface. So this vector is um, pointing towards uh, zero and the vector pointing downwards would be state one. So again, states live on this sphere. So each point is a state and they're in, there's infinite of them. So there are infinite states and that's basically how you represent, that's how, basically how you should think about states. So states are these vectors pointing to, um, from the origin to any point on the uh, sphere. And the action of gates is basically rotating that vector around on the sphere. So suppose, so um, actually, you know what? I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me um, explain this concept of states again. So any state can be represented like this. So till now we have been looking at states in this fashion, alpha zero plus beta one. Now alpha and beta are complex numbers. So I can, re any complex number you can represent it uh, like this, <clears throat> excuse me, a real number times e to the i phi. So alpha is represented like this, beta is represented like this. So what I can do is I can take out <clears throat> the phase factor common outside. And this is how my representation becomes if I just take the phase, fa uh, phase factor of the first one outside. Now, if you remember alpha square plus beta square is one or mod alpha square plus mod beta square is one. So that's one constraint. And uh, the overall phase doesn't really mean a thing. Like it's not a physical quantity. So doing some math and manipulations, this is how you can cast a qubit. So a qubit has basically two independent degrees of freedom, physical degrees of freedom, theta and this angle phi. So the zero state has cosine theta over two and the one state has a sine theta over two and e to the minus i phi coefficient. So what that means is, so now let's let's see what do these angles theta and phi represent in the context of the block sphere. So theta is this angle from the vertical. So it goes from zero to pi. So it goes from zero all the way down to pi. Zero is the uh, state vertically up and pi is the state that's vertically down. That's the range of um, theta. And phi is the angle of rotation on this plane. And so phi goes from, so phi is this plane, um, the xy plane. So phi goes around 0 to 360. So it can do a whole revolution while theta goes from 0 to pi. Um, right. So for example, what is state 0? Just just state zero. So just state zero would be um, this this coefficient is one and this one is zero. So the second coefficient would be zero when say theta is zero. So when theta is zero, it's the vertical. It's pointing right above. And um, theta being zero makes cosine to be one. So that is state zero. So state zero is exactly what I said. It's vertically above. Now state one for state one my this coefficient should be zero and that is zero when theta is pi because theta over two become 90 and cos 90 is zero so when i put theta to be um, uh, pi i get sine pi over two here 
which becomes one and then this is just a phase which really doesn't matter any value is fine so state one is the one that is pointing downwards so this is how this is a representation of a qubit you know like give you a physical picture like what is actually happening so an action of gates are basically rotating this um, the point the qubit point around the sphere so so um I'll come to this diagram at the end, but I just want to like first bring this up. So the X gate is basically a rotation about the X axis. The Y gate is the rotation rotation by Y axis and the Z gate is a rotation by uh, around Z axis. And the rotation is always 180 degrees in the context of X, Y and Z gates. So you can do something in between as well, but then X, Y and Z operations, like the way I showed you in the last um, video represents uh, 180 degree rotation about the given axis. So X over here is pointing outwards or it's coming outwards. Y is here and Z is here. So X, what was X gate? It's rotation about the X axis. So when I flip the zero state about the X axis by 180 degree, it would point to state one, right? So this is X coming out. Now, if I flip this state about the X axis by 180 degrees, it will point downwards so that's state one and that's the action of state x which is again rotation about the x axis by 180 degrees A similar goes for y and z states and um, this is another representation of the x y and z gates this is the most more general representation where uh, uh, i think this is called the symbol called psi or zeta i think psi um, this angle basically represents how much angle do you want to rotate state x by? So this is not 180. You can put in any value and this gate would work uh, out of the box. This gate would represent angle by uh, rotation about x axis by a certain angle. Rotation about y axis by this angle. Rotation about z axis by that particular angle. Also notice because for state 0 and 1, Rotation about z-axis does nothing because um, these states remain as is because they are on z they lie on z-axis. Okay, um, so this is one representation of states because uh, this is when um, x is sorry this zero and one is one representation. I also mentioned the plus and minus representation um, for qubits. The plus and minus representation looks like this. So. 0 and 1 lie on z axis, the plus and minus lie along x axis. So, um, uh, right, so th that's why I think they're, they're the eigenstates of the x poly matrix. matrix. So, um, the plus states, the plus state is here, and the minus state would be on the other side of it. So, this way you can have different representations. So you can have like three representations, one that are eigenstates of the X basis, one that is eigenstates of the Y basis, and one that is eigen uh, basis of uh, the Z poly matrix. So um, again, this is just a representation. And whenever, like I said, uh, X, the what gate X does is it rotates this vector all the way here. So different gates have different actions and all they do is rotate that vector or that point on the sphere to a different point or to a different vector. So this is how you should think about action of gates on qubits. Um, so compared to classical bits, which just contain zero and one value, here you, you're, you have a sphere has infinite points on its surface so your qubits can carry infinite amount of information and that's how you should think of qubits so um i think that's about it again if you didn't understand it it's not a big deal uh, this information is not required this is more or less for a general understanding of how what's happening but if you just got the fact that there is some kind of a sphere and that's and qubits live on the surface of it different points corresponds to different value of a qubit i think that's the least amount of information you need and that's all that is needed so um yeah i, I hope i did a half decent job but i think this is it for this video i will see you guys next time all right bye